I, I have to get into a bit of a net discussion with you ahead of tonight's game in the Big Ten, Illinois and Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights, red hot. They've won four straight against ranked teams. They're five and three in quad one games, yet right now they might be outside of the field looking in. They're 81st in the net. Meantime, you have a team in the same conference like Iowa, 0-5 in quad one games, and 19th in the net. How does that make sense? Wow. Hassle invoking Iowa into a discussion. <laughs> shocking. Huh. Shocking, Matt. I mean, I, I'm being honest here. That, I, I'm an Iowa fan. I know, I know. They no, should it's, not it's, be it's fair, in that no. position. I, I know. I got you. I know. I'm just, I'm just busting here. A part of it is because the net is based on who your opponents are and how your opponents have played against their opponents. Uh, you know, we get into the algorithms. I'm not going to go way into the weeds down that, but that that is part of it. And Rutgers also has some brutal losses. You lose at home to Lafayette, it's going to destroy your net. That's a that's a significant, significant reason why. Overall, I, I get you. Rutgers I would have on the outside looking in right now. From a team sheet perspective, Rutgers, yes, you said 81st in the net. It's also... 58th in strength of record, which is a resume. It's not predictive. And predictives, oh boy, Rutgers is 73rd at Ken Palm, 75th in Sagarin, uh, 60th in Sagarin, 65th in BPI. So there's plenty of more work to do. Rutgers has bad losses. That's basically it. Yes, the net to me seems a little bit low, but they also just started beating really good teams other than the big win against Purdue, Chris. So fascinating team. I think probably the most fascinating resume in the sport other than maybe Alabama and this is a huge opportunity also. And oh, by the way, it's a big game for Illinois on the road because the Illini, according to the projections, are still favored to be the team most likely to be on top of the Big Ten standings, but a loss on the road here. And then you're given more leeway to Wisconsin, which got a big win against Indiana. And of course, Purdue always still in the mix. It's got a road game against Northwestern. That might be a little slippery, but I think Purdue should be able to win that with uh, with some ease on, on Wednesday night. Just circling back to the, the net conversation, and you know, Jerry Palm has Iowa in the field, and most other every other bracketologist has Iowa uh, easily in the field right now. They have not beaten an NCAA tournament caliber team, maybe outside of Utah State this season, where maybe, yeah. Rutgers continues to show that they can beat teams better than them. I mean, wouldn't you rather, if you're the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee, wouldn't you rather have a team in there that has shown they can beat tournament teams rather than a team that is just blowing out teams that won't be in the tournament? Yeah, I, listen, I, we can have this discussion. I'm, I'm all for it, but I wanted to bring up Iowa's resume. Here's the deal, though. Losses at Purdue, Illinois, Iowa State, Wisconsin, Rutgers, okay, Purdue, at Penn State. So Iowa's case is a little wobbly, but a lot of those losses are good losses. Yes, you need to be able to beat teams, but Chris, I have been a proponent of this for so long. Loss volume has to matter. A completely different team in another conference. Oklahoma right now is two games above 500, has 12 losses. That's one of the most difficult strength of schedules. At a certain point, you still need to win these games. So if Rutgers can get it done going forward, I think it's going to be okay if it gets another couple of good wins. But loss volume has to matter. I don't care what your strength of schedule is. At a certain point, if you keep taking on these losses, no matter if you've beaten high-level teams, I don't like to make it binary, Chris. I don't like to have situations where you've got a team and they have, say, four good wins against clear-cut NCAA tournament teams, but they've got two quad threes and like six or seven quad two losses. Well, you've also proven that you have not been able to take advantage of a schedule that gives you a lot of opportunities. So, um, when you compare A versus B, sometimes it can be easy to make a case of one versus the other. But Rutgers has some bad losses as well. It has a lot of them. It's in the tournament picture. But if you really look at that schedule, there's a lot more coming down the road. There's going to be some real challenges there. I ultimately don't think Rutgers is going to get in. But I do root for a scenario in which uh, they make it as complicated as possible. And winning on Wednesday night against Illinois would certainly add to that. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.